This is Good Morning Sun Coast. We're here for you. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining joining us. I'm Jacqueline Matter. Well, you're off one day. It's hard I to get know. back. <laughs> it's like riding a bike. I'm Ray Collins. Good morning. Glad you're back. Thank you. Thank you for having me back. Let's get to John Scalzi now for the Tuesday forecast. Hey, John. Good morning to you. Go and welcome back, Jacqueline. Thank you. Another warm day here on the Sun Coast. Boy, yesterday was it was so hot in the <laughs> afternoon. Yeah. Uh, seven degrees above average yesterday, 87 degrees the temperature. That's a, a June, July temperature. And we'll probably get pretty close to that again today. Had a few sprinkles around yesterday, nothing to speak of. Trace amounts, really, but it didn't help out much in terms of the fire danger, which is still fairly high across the area. We'll have currently little chance of rainfall through the morning hours. By late in the afternoon, maybe a 10% chance of a passing sprinkle. That's about it. Yesterday's clouds now out in Gulf waters. We'll have a sunny start to the day. That'll be followed by a few fair weather clouds later in the afternoon. And we'll top it out again above average and very warm coming in in the mid 80s. Back to you. Very nice. Thank you, John. Checking roads right now. A little slowdown already heading on to the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. Be aware of that if you're heading north anytime soon. Checking uh, farther south now on the map. You'll see a slowdown on 41 northbound uh, heading away from downtown Bradenton. And uh, the bridges, one of them is already packed uh, this morning. Uh, strange to see that bridge that congested at 5.02 a.m. into uh, central uh, Sarasota County. Nothing major to report right now. A couple of construction projects ongoing. We do have a live shot of uh, Clark Road at I-75 where it's pretty quiet right now. We'll uh, check back there every 15 minutes to see how that is progressing as the uh, morning goes on. And back to the, max, back to the maps, he said. In the uh, lower portion of the screen, you'll see a little work project there. Actually, I was realizing... If you've got the ABC7 logo in front of that, you might not see the, the uh, little work project down there. I'm not sure if you can see that little uh, uh, animated thing at Warm Mineral Springs and Tarpon Point. But that's it for now at 5.02 on this Tuesday morning. Topping our news this half hour, the search continues for two suspects who robbed a home on Longboat Key. The thieves distracted the homeowners and got away with thousands of dollars worth of jewelry. Our Rick Adams has the story. An elderly couple who live in the Country Club Shore section of Longboat Key have been robbed of many pieces of valuable jewelry, costing many thousands of dollars, following what's being called a distraction burglary scheme. The victims didn't want to talk with us on camera, but longtime Country Club Shores resident Helen Smith did speak with us. She is shocked that this type of burglary happened in her neighborhood. I was very flabbergasted. I just couldn't believe it would happen out here on Longboat Key. Police say the thieves were posing as workers and distracted the victims at their Bogey Lane home Thursday afternoon. How the scheme works is a suspect knocks on the front door of the home and tells the homeowner he's there to do some hedge trimming and needs some help locating their property lines in the backyard. When the suspect and the homeowner are in the backyard, that's when another suspect comes through the front door to rob the home. Police say there are certain things you can do to avoid becoming a victim of a scam like this. If you have someone come to your door, you're not sure who they are, it's just don't answer the door and see what explanation they can give. Try to verify they are who they say they are. If you do go out, uh, make sure you lock the door behind you. These distraction burglaries have become a common scam here on the Sun Coast. Just recently, there have been at least two reports of these types of burglaries in Sarasota. Just be aware that this is happening. It could be something like, I lost my dog, I saw it go in your yard. It could be someone saying they're with a the utility department. Um, saying, you know, they need to use your phone. The victims only saw one suspect. He's described as a well-groomed Hispanic male, about five feet, eight inches tall, weighing 170 pounds, driving a newer model maroon pickup truck. Helen Smith tells us she's now going to be even more aware. Some of the criminals are going to go out to the nicer neighborhoods to think maybe they can get more. You know, that's, that's what they do. So I'm going to be more careful. On Longboat Key, I'm Rick Adams, ABC7, your Suncoast News. New this morning, the Northport Police Department is investigating an aggravated assault. It happened in the area of South Chamberlain Boulevard around midnight near Toledo Blade Boulevard in US 41. That suspect was captured after a short pursuit, but officers say there is no threat to the neighborhood. We'll have more details on this story as they become available. The number of road rage incidents involving guns is on the rise across the country, and the Sunshine State leads the nation with the highest number of those cases. 
A nonprofit news organization called The Trace reports there were 620 road rage incidents involving a gun just last year. Now, 146 of those cases were right here in Florida, with at least three of them being in Sarasota County. Some say firearms heighten the stakes in smaller altercations, while others say they provide an important line of defense. When guns are available and people are enraged, rather than use their fists or use their voices, they have a tendency to reach for their guns. I would rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And I don't think just introducing a firearm automatically raises the danger in any confrontational situation. AAA reports 80% of drivers admit to some instance of aggressive driving. A dubious distinction when it comes to pedestrian and bicyclist fatalities in Florida. The state is on pace for 600 killed this year. So far this year, the state has seen 146 pedestrian killed in traffic accidents. That's only into April. One died in Sarasota County. Three pedestrians and one bicyclist were killed in Manatee County. The Sarasota Police Department has a grant that included education, and now the crackdown phase begins. Yeah, the 237 uh, warning citations that we handed out went to drivers, went to pedestrians, and to bicyclists. So they went to all three. Um, and so we just hope that this uh, education let folks know that our officers are out there. They want to keep our community safe. And so moving forward, we will be actually issuing citations. There are similar initiatives across the state aimed at reducing the number of fatalities on the Florida roadways. Manatee Charter School may stay open just one more year. The 700 student school is facing several academic and administrative issues, among them chaotic learning environment, teachers not following lessons plans, and regular student misbehavior. Now a proposed resolution stands in between the charter school staying open for at least one more year or closing after this school year. In this proposal, the charter school will enter and follow a strict school improvement plan. The school board will make a decision later on today in Manatee County. The Venice City Council will go over plans today that could keep skydivers grounded at the Venice Municipal Airport. City officials are expected to vote on terminating an agreement between the city and Skydive Venice Beach. The city recently closed the skydiving business this week after several instances involving skydivers landing outside of the designated drop zone. Some skydivers didn't even land on airport property, with some landing at nearby sports parks and even Venice High School. A new owner took over the company just last month, and she says she will keep a closer eye on the situation if the city does allow them to reopen. All right, some amazing video. Check this out off the coast of Anna Maria. Several kiteboarders jumping over the city pier. Dimitri Maraminidis, <laughs> that might be close, hopefully. <laughs> He's the man behind the stunt. According to his website, he is a professional kiteboarder and has been, perform has been performing extreme stunts like this for a long time. This one stunned witnesses getting a reaction from those on the pier. Here you go. Oh, my goodness. That's amazing. Very really really cool. Good. I thought that was pretty incredible what he did, but if I was on that pier, I would be running and ducking. I think he should only be allowed to do it if the pier is clear with no people on there because it would be a shame to get someone hurt. Manatee County officials say the stunt could be illegal and is considered a non-criminal infraction. I actually know him. He's a tennis buddy of mine. <laughs> and no, I can't pronounce his last name still, but it's Dimitri. Great guy. He, his son also does it as well around the world. And now he has that video locally. Oh, my gosh. I think I agree with that second lady. I'd be uh, ducking <laughs> for cover not knowing what's going on. Yeah, it yeah, would be alarming, wouldn't yeah. it? <laughs> it does look like a really fun thing to do, though. Right. I've never done that, that, that uh, kite surfing. No. It looks absolutely phenomenally interesting. <laughs> it is fun. Living life on the edge. I bet. Yes. <laughs> we have some uh, changing weather coming up probably in September of next year. Oh, why don't you <laughs> oh, go out? Okay. Go <laughs> well, you can take off until then. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> the rest of the week looks pretty quiet. Of course, fire danger continues to increase. We'll talk about rain chances in a sec. Well, still ahead, one sea turtle is released from Moat Marine Lab after months of intensive care as scientists are urging boaters and beachgoers to be watchful. And later in the hour, new developments involving the Charleston church shooter, Dylan Roof. Stay with us. Today at 4 on Suncoast View. I'm Stephanie Roberts on Suncoast View. Twinkle and Rock Soul Radio perform live in our studio, plus Easter egg decorating tips and yoders in the kitchen. Today at 4 on Suncoast View. This is an important medical announcement. 
Bard IVC filters have been linked to punctured veins and problems with migration. Anyone who's received a Bard IVC filter must receive medical monitoring and may be entitled to substantial compensation. If you have the Bard Recovery G2 or G2 Express filter, you are in a class of patients who should be compensated for some expenses. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. This call is confidential. There's no cost and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to people who should have been warned about the risks of the Bard IVC filters. Call the IVC filter hotline if you or a loved one has received an IVC filter and experienced a vein puncture or required medical monitoring. You must call now. Call 800-329-3089. 800-329-3089. Is your old garage door stuck or broken? Would a new one give you a lift? Let Precision Door Overhead Garage Door Service of Sarasota come to the rescue with prompt and affordable repair service. Replacement doors come with an array of styles and colors, and they are rated to meet and exceed Florida standards. From estimates to installation, your satisfaction is our priority. If you're not 100% satisfied with any product, service, or installation, we will make it right, because Precision Door Service is a name you can trust. Are you Goodwill? Yes, because when I donate or shop at Goodwill, I'm creating a job. I am Goodwill, yeah, yeah. At Tidewell Hospice, we know it's never too late to say thank you to our military veterans. The Tidewell Honors Veterans Program has provided care to more than 13,000 military families since 2008. Tidewell volunteers help honor veterans through special pinning ceremonies that demonstrate our appreciation for the freedom our veterans fought to defend. If you know a veteran who can benefit from end-of-life care, call or visit Tidewell.org today. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. Now, the official Sun Coast weather with ABC7 meteorologist John Scalzi. Yep, warm weather on the Sun Coast. In fact, all up and down the eastern seaboard, temperatures are above average west. Yesterday, we hit 87 degrees, 7 degrees above the normal for this time of year. And that beat will go on again today, I think. We have a general easterly wind flow that's going to be kind of strong. That'll keep the sea breeze pretty close to the coastline. So consequently, even inland temperatures will get pretty close to the 90 degree mark today. Temperatures across the deep south generally holding in the mid 60s. It's even warm in Tupelo, warmer in Tupelo than it is here in Sarasota. Uh, currently, we have an air temperature coming in, as you just saw, 61 degrees. Dew point still relatively low. So if you're going to have warm summer-like days, you might as well have them with low relative humidity, right? So our dew point coming in in the mid-50s right now is pretty comfortable. East-northeast winds today, right now northeast at about 5 under fairly clear skies out there. It's a nice start to a, a beautiful afternoon shaping up for us. Now, yesterday we had a few sprinkles around. Didn't really add much to the rainfall bucket. In fact, it was just trace amounts. And it was mostly down to the south around the mouth of Charlotte Harbor. But a few made it a little bit further to the north. Uh, I think the same situation could occur again today. The rain chance less than 10%. Um, we do have a couple of chances this week of maybe a 20% chance for some rain showers. Maybe tomorrow and then again on Saturday. But... Until then, I think we're not going to see much in the way of rain and our, our, our drought totals, our fire danger indexes, all going to go up. Now, here are the rain showers that you saw yesterday. This is a 14-hour loop, and you can see some of them just kind of moving past. Mostly right along the coastline is where they kind of blossomed as the uh, general easterly wind kind of encountered what was trying to develop into a sea breeze. And you got those showers building, moving out into Gulf waters, mostly in the Gulf waters. And they were very light. They really didn't amount to much at all. 
Across the entire state of Florida, things still continue to be dry. If you go back to the west, there are some showers in progress around uh, Louisiana Delta region, back toward uh, parts of uh, uh, Texas between Dallas and uh, Houston. That is a location where there may actually be some severe weather today, so we'll be watching for that. North of that, there's a low-pressure area that extends a little bit further to the east today than it did yesterday. Yesterday, it was centered around Chicago area. Today, it'll be uh, more along the eastern Great Lakes. And there, too, is a potential for some severe weather up there around Niagara or Buffalo. Low pressure area continues to lift off to the north and to the east. The trailing cold front just meanders really through parts of the deep south, generally in the same place that it was yesterday in the tail end of this system. High pressure remains our dominant weather feature and provides us with that easterly wind flow that's going to encourage again today. A few scattered showers over on the other coast and one or two of them may make their way into our territory. By the time we get to around 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, maximum daytime heating. So today, mostly sunny start and warm. Then a late afternoon cloud begins to build, drifting in from the other coast. Breezy conditions throughout the day, keeping that sea breeze very close to the coastline. Consequently, our temperatures warmer. And then uh, a little bit cooler right near the immediate coast. And perhaps an isolated sprinkle really not amounting to much tomorrow. Perhaps a little more active sea breeze brings us a little better rain chance. And then Saturday, perhaps a backdoor cold front brings us a slight rain chance. None of these rain chances are very big. And the temperatures through the week, I'm pretty sure, are going to remain above average right straight through the period. Back to you guys. All right, thanks so much, John. Taking a look at Suncoast traffic this morning, Skyway Bridge seeing a little bit of a slowdown. And as you head up towards the Tampa region, as we head into Manatee County, looks like some congestion down towards downtown Bradenton. Also, there is a construction project that looks like that is towards State Road 70 and 301. Also seeing some congestion. I-75 looking clear as we head into Sarasota County. Some construction projects throughout that area as well. Also some congestion off of Clark Road. We do have a live look from Clark Road and State Road or I-75. Traffic picking up, but pretty quiet at 517 on this Tuesday morning. Other than that, as we head into South County, pretty quiet throughout that area. Another construction project towards Warm Mineral Springs, but no accidents to report on this Tuesday. Millions of tourists come to the Sun Coast each year for the white sand and the clear water of our beaches. That's right, but those beaches aren't just appealing to tourists. They also make Sarasota a great place to call home. ABC 7's Linda Carson shows us why. The Walker Guest House has been here on the grounds of the Ringling Museum since November of 2015, but it's leaving at the end of April, and this is definitely something you don't want to miss. It was built here and is sponsored by the Sarasota Architectural Foundation. The Walker Guest House is remarkable. We call it the original tiny house. It was designed by architect Paul Rudolph in 1952, and it was his first solo commission and the original house is still standing on Sanibel Island. And Paul Rudolph and this house are very important to Sarasota. Paul Rudolph was really the father. He and Ralph Twitchell um, uh, were the co-founders of a movement called the Sarasota School of Architecture um, back in the early 50s. Sarasota architect Carl Abbott studied under Paul Rudolph at Yale and heard him talk about the Walker Guest House. This is one of his favorite early buildings, and it's one of his first early buildings, too. I think it is the very first. but. But uh, yeah, he did talk about it because it is so simple and so, so clean and so logical. Abbott calls it a building in motion. So the panels do go up and down and they close to make it, it becomes almost like a, like a cave or it can become a pavilion. You know, the, wall, the walls go up and down. So it's just a totally flexible space. It's a, a wonderful example of the Sarasota School uh, principles of bringing the outside in and you know, talking about sustainable green architecture. And the size is small. The original Walker guest house is still in use by the Walker family. And Mrs. Walker, now in her 90s, still lives there. It's a perfect example of mid-century modern architecture. Uh, it's sometimes called a machine for living, sometimes they call them less is more out of, out of 
is Van der Rohe. This house really does that, it, and it combines all those aesthetics of the Bauhaus. It's perfect, pure, nothing you don't need, everything you do, nothing you don't. Since the original Walker guest house is not open to the public, this replica draws architects from around the world and was written up in the Wall Street Journal, a real feather in Sarasota's cap. Well, Sarasota is unique in that it's, you know, there aren't many places that would would do this. I think to have an organization as strong as Sarasota Architecture Foundation that really does care about our architectural legacy. The Walker Guest House closes on April 30th with great fanfare. There'll be a big celebration open to the public. Linda Carson, ABC7, your Suncoast News. Now that uh, foundation has actually a booklet that will trace the, the top local homes that are very unique in architecture. Yeah. And I uh, traced it one day. There's a lot of interesting houses out by Lido Shores, which is right. the neighborhood on the way toward Longboat Key. So get on your bike and go check it out some definitely. weekend. Yeah. And I definitely thought it was interesting that she said that Mrs. Walker in her 90s still lives in the original yeah. home. How awesome is that? In the, in the Walker house. What a coincidence. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, a loggerhead turtle is now getting a new lease on life with some help from Moat Marine Laboratory. Employees released Mike back into the Gulf from Anna Maria Island at the Bayfront Park there. Mike's an adult female loggerhead turtle that Moat rescued off Longboat Key in January. She was suffering from toxins brought on by red tide and also pneumonia. After two and a half months of intensive care at Moat's Sea Turtle Rehabilitation Hospital, she is now better than ever. But Moat reminds boaters and beachgoers to be watchful, especially during the upcoming turtle nesting season. Just stay back from them, watch them. They're beautiful, graceful creatures, but you don't want to uh, bother them. Again, they are protected and threatened, um, but they're amazing to watch. It was awesome. It was a once in a lifetime. Hopefully, I'll do it again. It was. She was huge, <laughs> and she took off fast. A little subplot here. Mike was found with a tag from 2011 on it from the University of Central Florida after she had nested in Brevard County. So she has been to both coasts. <laughs> And it's a busy little turtle there. I love the fact that the female turtle is named Mike. <laughs> okay, okay. Our producer and I were wondering that same thing. Why? Who knows? Well, Who knows? The top realtor is Michael Saunders. That's a woman in the area, so okay. it's not there unheard of. And also the, the actress in Little House uh, on the Waltons was uh, Michael Learned. So sometimes women do have the name Mike or Michael, but it's not that common, is it? Yeah. <laughs> no. Did not know that. All right, well, still ahead on Good Morning Sun Coast. An apparent murder-suicide leaves two adults and a student dead in California. We'll have the latest next half hour. Invest in Kids is a $7.5 million project to build a new Boys and Girls Club in South Manatee County. I'm Caleb Grimes, and I was a club kid. It's where I learned important life lessons, leadership, integrity, responsibility, and baseball. Thousands of kids attend the Boys and Girls Clubs, and after years of use, their club is slowly falling apart. Help us invest in kids. Make your donation today. Thank you. Are you considering joint replacement or revision surgery? Consider this. Dr. Edward Stolarski has performed thousands of successful joint replacement procedures and trained surgeons from all over the world. Using advanced technologies, Dr. Stolarski is able to perform some of the most complex surgeries. I wish I knew about Dr. Stolarski much sooner. After the surgery, I don't have any pain. It's like I've got a 16-year-old hip. My name's Ed Stolarski. What I really do is I give people back their life. Schedule a consultation today. But is it? It's really just the beginning, right? Have you written a book and want it published but don't know where to start? You're not alone. Page publishing cuts through the confusion that most new authors face, like copyright protection, barcodes, printing, and digital uploading. We will get your book into bookstores now. We guide you through the publishing maze and help you distribute and sell your work in hard copy and ebook formats. That's right, we will digitize and place your book for sale on Amazon, Apple iBooks, and Google, offering it to millions. Don't waste another minute. Most publishers won't even look at new author submissions, but we're different. We review your book and provide you feedback in about a week. If we decide to publish your book, your work ends and ours begins. From copy editing and proofing to typesetting and book cover art, our team gets you into bookstores fast. Call for your free author submission kit at 800-425-5308.
Another warm day on the way, 525 right now. Well, Tesla has hit a major milestone, becoming America's most valuable automaker. Wow, details in this morning's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, Tesla has charged its way to the top. The electric car maker is now the most valuable in the U.S., passing General Motors, despite selling fewer than 80,000 vehicles last year. GM sells millions. In-flight cell phone calls won't be happening anytime soon. The FCC is halting its own effort to give airlines the option of making those calls possible. The proposal was floated four years ago, but received some backlash from flyers and flight attendants. And this was once the cool way to listen to music long before for the iPod. Today is National 8-Track Tape Day, so set aside some moments uh -huh. to remember the clunky cartridges. The 8-Track was popular for almost 20 years, mostly in the 60s and 70s, though not many of those around. No, I imagine like some five-year-olds would look at that and go, what do we do with this? It's tough to make a Walkman out of an 8-Track. <laughs> yeah. Those are your Tech Bites. Tech Bites, brought to you by Bear Paint. The average family's new but old home. It's stood up to two rookies, three terrible twos, and a one coat wonder named Grams. It's survived multiple personalities, three staycations, and one tiny announcement Bear. Number one rated interior paint, exterior paint, and stain. Protecting and perfecting since 1947. Only at the Home Depot. Allergy symptoms distracting you? Doctors recommend taking Claritin every day of your allergy season for continuous relief. Claritin provides powerful, non-drowsy 24-hour relief for fewer interruptions from the amazing things you do every day. Live Claritin clear every day. My trainer didn't believe me that Trop 50 could taste so good and still have 50% fewer calories. Can I stop, Jane? No. Trop 50 tastes so good you won't believe it has 50% fewer calories. Check out My Suncoast Dining on MySuncoast.com for Chef Judy's favorite recipes, restaurant guide, and more. Go to MySuncoast.com slash dining. They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere for the Sarasota Ford Promise. Our promise means a new car you'll love. If not, return it for one you do. At Sarasota Ford, we promise live market pricing. We monitor national pricing on our entire inventory so you get the best deal. In fact, we guarantee it. Bring us any competitor's ad and we'll beat it by at least $1,000. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301. SarasotaFord.com. This is an important medical announcement. Xeralto and Pradoxa have been linked to uncontrollable bleeding and even death. If you've been prescribed one of these drugs and have experienced these dangerous side effects, you may be entitled to substantial compensation. Studies show that Pradoxa can cause more heart attacks than warfarin, and other countries have already issued safety warnings against this drug. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. The call is confidential. There's no cost, and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to Pradoxa victims, and thousands of Xarelto victims are filing their legal cases. Call the Drug Watch Hotline if you or a loved one used Xeralto or Pradoxa and experienced uncontrollable bleeding, brain hemorrhage, or even death. You must call now. Call 800-793-6055. 800-793-6055. So many times we underestimate the human spirit's drive to recover. We often see people surpass what any of us might have expected initially. The Rehabilitation Pavilion at Sarasota Memorial is um, the top of the line. It allows us to really bring the patient's recovery to the next level. What Florida city is best known for space flight? Cape Carnival. Cape Carnival? Close enough. What condiment includes vinegar, molasses, and anchovies? Westchester sauce? Close enough! And now, a word from our sponsors. One off from the Florida Lottery. Now available for pick two, three, four, and five games. Miss by one on any or all numbers and still win.
coming up on Good Morning Sun Coast, two people dead and another injured after a man opens fire in an elementary school in California. No charges for the Navy SEAL who forced a trainee to go underwater repeatedly, leading to his death. We'll tell you why. And how the Miami Heat are pitching in to help a small college after a thief steals thousands of dollars in equipment from campus. Live from the ABC 7 studios, this is Good Morning Suncoast. We're here for you. And good Tuesday morning. Pretty shot there of the Ringling Causeway. Nicely uh, lit from underneath as well. You see that? Mm -hmm. Looks beautiful. Very nice lights beautiful. underneath that span. Built about 15 years ago. A lot, amidst a lot of controversy, but most folks are happy that they went ahead and built that signature bridge in the middle of downtown Sarasota. 531 Tuesday morning. I'm Ray Collins. And I'm Jacqueline Matter. I was going to tell you guys that when I was in North Carolina this past weekend, it was too cold for me. I have been, uh, become accustomed to... Florida weather. <laughs> yeah, was it like 60s or 50s? Yeah, or? yeah. I mean, it was ranging, but I was like, yeah. I, I've got to get back to Florida. It's oh, far too cold here for me. I understand. That's why we're all here. Here's John Skulls with more on today's uh, temperatures. Oh, you picked the wrong weekend, Jack. <laughs> it's it's going to be warm there this weekend. Of course. Thought about Go it. figure. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, 54 degrees, says Becky in uh, Old Mayaka, and she didn't mention anything about rain showers yesterday. She's usually pretty good about reporting any little teeny bit of raindrops because she's a gardener and boy she she's been saying she could use a little rain out there and you know what it's it's really not coming today either maybe an isolated sprinkle like we had yesterday but radar is clean as a whistle right now uh, we're watching that throughout the afternoon and probably not seeing much of a change there uh, like yesterday maybe an isolated sprinkle but the uh, total rainfall amounts will be in the trace category. Uh, we've got a little cloud cover out in the Gulf waters, but that's about it. As dawn breaks on the sun coast, it'll be a mostly sunny start. And again, a warm one. Daytime high temperatures topping out well above average. We'll probably be pretty close to where we were yesterday, which was 87 degrees. Complete forecast in a minute, folks. All right, John, talk to you soon. Thank you. Still a buildup. If you're heading north toward the Sunshine Skyway, be aware of a at least a slowdown, perhaps more there as you just get toward the span itself. Farther south now into Manatee County, we'll see a little bit of slowdowns around downtown Bradenton, coming off the bridge, heading down into downtown at State Road 64. Farther south now on the maps into uh, Sarasota County, a little slowdown on 41 southbound around uh, 10th Street where we are. And we, here's a live picture now of the uh, Clark Road I-75 area. Looks like Russ has his uh, flashers on in the car. You see the <laughs> I-75 sign being illuminated. That's At least he's good. staying safe. Yeah. He's doing proper protocol out there. Yeah, and all the drivers are as well so far. So good, slow out there so far. We'll check back in 15 minutes. And farther south now into Sarasota County. No problems to report at 533 on your Tuesday morning. Topping our news this half hour, a teacher and a student were killed, plus another student shot in an apparent murder-suicide at a California elementary school yesterday. Authorities say the teacher's husband opened fire before first kill after killing himself. ABC's Donya Backus has the, the latest from San Bernardino, California. The emergency calls coming in just before 10.30 this morning. Possible active shooter at North Park Elementary. Lines of elementary school students hand in hand being rushed to safety as law enforcement officers surround the building. My partner's carrying one out to the front, okay? We believe we have the shooter down inside. Authorities say 53-year-old Cedric Anderson checked in at the front desk to visit his wife, Karen Smith, a teacher at the school. He had simply said that he was there to drop something off with his wife. They say he went into the classroom with a large caliber handgun, shooting and killing his wife and an eight-year-old student who was standing behind her before turning the gun on himself. Another student, a nine-year-old, also standing behind the teacher, was shot and is now in stable condition. I am told that both the students were behind the teacher when the suspect shot his wife. We have no reason to believe that students were specifically targeted. I fell to my knees and started saying our fathers and Hail Marys. Parents learning of the news rushing to find their children. Oh my gosh. She won't, she doesn't see me, but I can see her. They look like they're all crying, they're all holding hands, and they look very scared. Many here still in disbelief. I'm a mom and I feel bad for, you know, the kids that have to go through all this because they're, they're, they're all the, the kids are the innocent ones. Authorities say there were 15 first through fourth graders inside that special needs classroom during the shooting. Authorities also say that the husband and wife were estranged and were only married for a few months. In San Bernardino, California, Danya Backus, ABC News.
In politics, at least two high-ranking government officials are accusing Russia of knowing about the chemical weapons attack that left dozens dead in Syria last week. Senator John McCain and U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Nikki Haley both say Russian officials knew about the attack. Now, Russia is denying the accusations but continues to support Syria, its number one trading partner. After the missile strike in Syria late last week, Russia issued a joint statement with Iran and Hezbollah warning of retaliation for any new missile strikes. Florida is joining more than a dozen other states in an effort to reinstate President Trump's new travel ban. In documents submitted to a U.S. Court of Appeals, the states say the ban falls under the president's authority to block foreigners from coming into the U.S. They also reject claims that the ban targets Muslims. The Court of Appeals is considering a ruling by a federal judge in Hawaii that blocked that ban. Taxpayers in Palm Beach County are not so happy with visits from the president. Trump's visits to his Mar-a-Lago resort have cost taxpayers about $2 million since January. Each day he visits, the county spends more than $60,000, most of that for law enforcement overtime. The county hopes that the federal government will step in and reimburse them that money. But now commissioners are suggesting to impose a special tax against the president's property. Charleston church shooter Dylan Roof was back in court to face state charges in the shooting that left nine people dead in Charleston, South Carolina about a year and a half ago. Roof has been given nine life sentences in exchange for his guilty plea in state court. Since he already has received the death penalty in federal court, this plea bargain was just to spare relatives and family of the victims another emotional trial. Roof did not speak in court yesterday in South Carolina. A Navy SEAL instructor has been cleared of charges in a sailor's drowning. 21-year-old James Lovelace was pushed repeatedly underwater during a Navy SEAL basic training pool exercise 11 months ago. Lovelace had been dunked at least twice while struggling to tread water in full gear. At the time, the coroner ruled it a homicide. But a Navy commander stepped in and made the decision to not pursue charges, adding that the autopsy revealed that Lovelace had an enlarged heart, which she says contributed to his death. An aviation security officer is on paid leave this morning after video surfaced of a man being dragged off of a United Airlines flight. United Airlines says that flight was overbooked and four people needed to get off so a crew could be sent from Chicago to Louisville. After no one volunteered to get off the plane, the four passengers were randomly selected. However, one man who was chosen refused to get off, saying he was a doctor and needed to get back to his patients. He was then yanked from his seat and dragged off, leaving other passengers stunned. He's done really nothing other than say, this is my seat, I bought and paid for it, I need to go to Louisville. I could not believe what I was seeing or hearing. Um, I, I, was in, I was in shock. While it is legal for airlines to remove passengers from flights, the incident is now under investigation. The CEO of United says it's a, quote, upsetting event. In Oregon, a risky rescue for a man stuck on a rock ledge on the Pacific coast. Watch this. The U.S. Coast Guard was able to save the man. Rescuers say the conditions were treacherous due to high winds, rain, and hail. The man and his wife were both taken to the hospital for treatment, and they both are expected to be okay. Wow. On to state news now. The Miami Heat helping a technical college hit by robberies. The D.A. Dorsey Technical College had $25,000 worth of computer equipment and $20,000 worth of tools stolen from campus. Well, cameras caught the thief right there using a rock to break to get in, to get in and take a recycling bin full of equipment out. There he goes. As part of its Random Acts of Heat initiative, the Miami Heat made a $20,000 donation to help replace the stolen computer equipment. This is what we do. This is what Random Acts of Heat is all about. Uh, when a need happens, we try to respond right away. Sometimes it's something really simple, it's providing gas or groceries to someone. Sometimes it's more like this, where a school is in need and the financial contribution is large. Microsoft also gave six Surface tablets and software to the school. As for the thief, well, so far he has been able to get away. Florida officials will get an update next week on the state's growing bear population. Hunting supporters have argued that a hunt is a way better is a way to better manage bear populations. However, the Florida Fish and Wildlife update does not include anything specific about holding a hunt. 
Bear hunting has been a controversial issue since the Wildlife Commission allowed the first bear hunt in more than 20 years back in 2015. We're not planning on giving anything specific about bear hunting in 2017. However, with that said, at all of the previous commission meetings recently, the public has come and talked about bear hunting. So we anticipate that likely will happen again. And our commissioners can always, uh, you know, engage on that topic if they wish to do so. If they did not have one last year, they figured it was done for a while in error. And now people are realizing it is back up and will be back up the possibility of a hunt. And we are hearing from members all over the state and all over the country, actually, in opposition of any kind of bear trophy hunt. The commission decided against holding a hunt just last year after 304 bears were killed in two days during that 2015 hunt. The decision was to give the agency more time to build a case for future hunts and to provide more time for non-lethal efforts to help reduce human bear conflicts to take hold. It may soon be easier to catch a train on the Gulf Coast. Amtrak services between New Orleans and Florida ended after Hurricane Katrina hit back in 2005, but starting today, the Southern Rail Commission will hold six meetings to discuss efforts to restore the passenger rail service. The Amtrak CEO says his agency is committed to running trains as soon as funding and railroad settlements agreements are settled. Take a train to Mardi Gras next year, John. <laughs> be fun. <laughs> I wonder what kind of train they're going to be thinking about building, whether it's going to be a bullet train or just your, your standard passenger locomotive. To be continued. Yes, indeed. Kind of neat. Yeah. We're looking at uh, some uh, rain shower possibilities down the road, but today's more than basically another dry one and another warm one yesterday, 87 degrees. Mm -hmm. I thought I saw a chance of rain yesterday about 4 p.m. in Sarasota. It got real dark suddenly. Yeah, we had some sprinkles around and we got trace amounts of rainfall, but nothing yeah. that really no. aided the, uh, the rain bucket. No. <laughs> so we'll try again today. Yep. All right, well, still ahead, money may not buy happiness, but it could help you feel better. We'll show you how it can impact your health coming up next in your Health Smart. Our community has its struggles. The fact is, people have less than they did just a few years ago, and sadly, the need becomes more profound every day. Season of Sharing provides funds to help individuals and families in need, ensuring they will not end up homeless and without a roof over their heads. Together, providing a helping hand and making a difference. Season of Sharing. Give today at cfsarasota.org. If you've ever had a bad night's sleep, call it Price the new Craftmatic Legacy. It has so much more than other adjustables and still costs up to 50% less. Featuring a rising adjustable pillow rest to support your head, neck, and shoulders, bedside power plugs, under bed night lights, and more. So call it Price one today for less, up to 50% less than Tempur-Pedic sleep number and other adjustables. You get so much more and it still costs less. You gotta see how little they cost. Call 1-800-774-8103. That's 1-800-774-8103. Call now. What to do when your heating or air conditioning needs service or heaven forbid replacement? Call Air Now today. We've been serving Sarasota and Manatee County since 1946. We offer $49.95 tune-ups, lease or finance options, and remember, service today or it's free. Today, everyone is looking for carpeting that lasts longer. G Freed has you covered with Karistan. With a legacy of quality and integrity, we provide you with a huge selection of Karistan carpets with exclusive lifetime limited warranties. All installed by our highly skilled, highly knowledgeable team. Come ask us why Karistan is the best and most durable. G-Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. Are you Goodwill? Yes, because when I donate. Or shop at Goodwill. I am creating a job. I am Goodwill, yeah, yeah. During the past 10 years, Tidewell Hospice volunteers have provided more than 1 million hours of service. They sit with patients, giving caregivers a break. They work in offices. They take their furry friends on pet therapy visits. They even clown around. Every task performed by a volunteer makes a difference in the lives of our patients and their families. Join Tidewell's volunteer team. They're truly one in a million. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. 
Is your old garage door stuck or broken? Would a new one give you a lift? Let Precision Door Overhead Garage Door Service of Sarasota come to the rescue with prompt and affordable repair service. Replacement doors come with an array of styles and colors, and they are rated to meet and exceed Florida standards. From estimates to installation, your satisfaction is our priority. If you're not 100% satisfied with any product, service, or installation, we will make it right because Precision Door Service is a name you can trust. Need more space in your place? The More Space Place can help. With Murphy beds that disappear to reveal a home office, living room, or den. Custom closets with designated areas for your shoes, bags, wardrobe, and accessories. Custom built entertainment centers, garage storage systems, and more. The More Space Place has three showrooms next to Sunny's on US 41 South in Sarasota, on Lakewood Ranch Boulevard just south of State Route 64 in Bradenton, and on Tamiami Trail next to Panera Bread in Port Charlotte. Put more space in your place at the More Space Place. Now, the official Sun Coast weather with ABC7 meteorologist John Scalzi. So, current temperature outside, 61 degrees, not too bad, though. Becky Mayaka has a cooler temperature coming in in the uh, mid-50s. We have a dew point value that's also in the mid-50s, coming in at about 55 degrees. We have a northeast wind at 5 miles per hour under clear skies, and we're looking at some pretty quiet, decent conditions across the region. Visible satellite imagery doesn't show much in the way of any kind of rain, rainfall here. We're looking at a little bit of cloud cover across the region. Uh, not much in the way of uh, any kind of impediments to a nice start to the morning. A lot of sunshine forecast for us. As we head into the next several days, we've got uh, probably pretty much of the same, actually. A lot of sunshine around. Titan radar picking up a few scattered showers that we had yesterday, kind of moving off the coastline there, not adding much to the rainfall total. Most of them occurred out in the uh, Gulf waters as the uh, general easterly wind flow kind of butted up against what was trying to develop into a sea breeze, but couldn't because of that strong easterly flow. And we got a few showers out here that kind of rapidly moved out into the central Gulf. That's where the clouds are right now, far away from us. So we start the day off mostly sunny and we look at the Atlanta airport and the Raleigh-Durham airport and the Charlotte airport and don't see anything there that could create any problems if you're commuting this, not commuting, but a long commute if you're traveling this morning. But back to the west around the Dallas and the Houston airports, there are uh, showers and thunderstorms, this kind of complex of showers and thunderstorms, which is going to be around throughout the day today and could actually lead to some severe weather back there. No such Issues across the state of Florida. Trailing cold front in an area of low pressure to the north, also a little further to the east today than yesterday, has the potential for producing some severe weather. In well, stretching from Cleveland on through upstate New York and into down east Maine. All part of a low pressure area whose top half will move into the main region over the next 24 hours, but whose bottom half is really not going to move all that much. It's going to be a real slow mover as it basically stalls out right through parts of the deep south. Not much of a chance of that cold front ever making it to the state of Florida. The east wind continues, got a few scattered showers over on the other coast, and mostly sunny conditions will prevail. Late afternoon clouds, breezy, colder coast, and isolated sprinkle. Again, the location for the severe weather today along this line stretching from New York State down to uh, Texas. For the state of Florida, we won't even see any rainfall whatsoever, and that's too bad. Drought indexes, or fire indexes continue to rise very high in Manatee County and most everywhere else moderate to high across the region. So we sure could use a little rainfall around here. Seven-day forecast shows a couple of days with maybe some slightly better rain chances, but really nothing here that is going to bring us significant rainfall right through the seven day forecast and temperatures remain warm. Back to you. All right, thanks so much, John. Taking a look at Sun Coast traffic this morning, a little bit of congestion if you're heading up toward Tampa, towards Skyway Bridge. Other than that, looking clear if you're heading into Manatee County. As we head into Bradenton area, a little bit of congestion in downtown Bradenton, also State Road 70, and towards that Cortez and 41 Road area. And Sarasota County, there is an accident. It looks like it is towards I-75. If that is towards the northbound lane, there is a stalled vehicle at exit 207, which is Bee Ridge Road. Other than that, Fruitville and 
Clark Road looking pretty clear. We do have a live look from Clark Road where you can see a little bit of congestion, but pretty quiet at 550 this morning. So if you're heading out the door, not a whole lot of traffic you'll be running into. As we head into South County, pretty quiet throughout that area. No accidents to report in that direction. In health news this morning, Suncoast Congressman Vern Buchanan wants to prepare now so the nation is ready in the event of a deadly infectious disease outbreak. Buchanan wants Congress to create a rapid response fund to combat diseases like Zika and Ebola. He says the fund would allow the country's top disease fighters to respond immediately to outbreaks instead of having to wait for Congress to act. Florida was ground zero for the Zika virus just last year, and Buchanan says he had to fight for federal resources for nearly a year before funding for that was available. Now that spring is here, you may find yourself spending some more time outside cleaning up the yard before the weather gets too hot, but for some, it may be a real pain, especially in your back. When it comes to yard work, doctors say it's best to slow it down. People often get hurt doing more than their body is able to do. Typically, our bodies begin losing strength after the age of 30, and on average, it can go down up to 1% every single year. So as we age, activities should be modified to avoid injury. Many aches and pains can be treated at home, but certain symptoms warrant medical attention. You should see a doctor if your pain is increasing or you have neurological deficits, which includes numbness, tingling, weakness, difficulty going to the bathroom. Those are all concerns. It's also important to keep in mind that as we age, the body doesn't recover from injury as well or as fast. And if you don't think money affects your health, well, think again. A study in The Lancet finds the richest 1% of Americans live an average of 10 to 15 years longer than the poorest 1%. Since 2001, those with the least income show no increase in survival, while people in middle and high income groups have gained an average of two years in life expectancy. People in low income groups have always been linked to poorer health outcomes, mostly because they cannot afford as much health care and are more likely to smoke and eat an unhealthy diet. Well, stay with us. We'll have more news and weather coming up after the break. Our community has its struggles. The fact is, people have less than they did just a few years ago, and sadly, the need becomes more profound every day. Season of Sharing provides funds to help individuals and families in need, ensuring they will not end up homeless and without a roof over their heads. Together, providing a helping hand and making a difference. Season of Sharing. Give today at cfsarasota.org. Credit card debt can ruin your life. If you owe $10,000 and minimum payments are siphoning away your paycheck each month, you can get debt free in less time than you think. I've paid $800 a month for the past three years and haven't changed the balance on my credit card. Get Debt Free Now has a program to reduce your debt, stop the harassing phone calls, avoid financial ruin, and settle for less than you owe. I feel like a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders. You're pre-approved for our special hardship program if you owe $10,000 or more. Upon payment of your new lower balance, your debt will finally shrink until you are debt free. My family no longer has 30 years of payments ahead of us at 20% interest. There's no fees until you see results. So call now, make one monthly program payment and free up your cash. Resolve your debt. Call 800-685-6422, 800-685-6422. So many times we underestimate the human spirit's drive to recover. We often see people surpass what any of us might have expected initially. The Rehabilitation Pavilion at Sarasota Memorial is um, the top of the line. It allows us to really bring the patient's recovery to the next level. So many Looking for carpet? Look no further. Manasota Flooring has smart strand carpet as low as $1.79 per square foot. Installed, no add-ons or extras. Unbelievable? Manasota Flooring can have in-stock carpet installed in your home in 48 hours for as low as $1.99 per square foot. Don't miss these prices. Visit Manasota Flooring today. 
They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere for the Sarasota Ford Promise. We promise we're more than a dealership. We're a destination with a movie theater, massage room, aquarium, cafe, and more. We promise to give you top dollar for your trade, even if you don't buy from us. And if you do, we promise you the best deal. Bring us any competitor's ad and we'll beat it by at least $1,000. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301. SarasotaFord.com. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. Welcome back, 555 on this Tuesday. Here's a look at some of the top stories we're following for you here on the Sun Coast. The search is on for two thieves who stole thousands of dollars in jewelry from a couple on Longboat Key. Why law enforcement is warning that it's part of a bigger scam. Plus, how a vote today by the Venice City Council could keep skydivers grounded at the Venice Municipal Airport. And a stunt over a pier on Anna Maria Island is stunning bystanders but causing concern for some Manatee County officials will show you why in just a few minutes. More warm weather continues. John's forecast and traffic in two minutes. Stay with us.